There was one time in the Gemara in Masichet Shabbat, there was a Jew, his name was Yosef Mokir Shabbat. You heard about him? Yosef the Jew, his specialty, he loved to respect Shabbat. All week, preparation for Shabbat. He goes to the market, he buys something nice for Shabbat. The next day he goes to the market, he sees something better, he takes the other thing from yesterday, eat it. And there's something that is better for Shabbat. Everything for him, Shabbat, Shabbat. One time, the, the goi, the, he had a neighbor, the goy, anti-Semite neighbor, that hate Jews. And the, the, this anti-Semite went to a fortune teller. And the fortune teller told him, one day your neighbor Yosef, the Jew, will inherit everything you have. Ma, I can't stand him, I hate him. He said, nothing you can do about it. Nothing you can do about it. What did he do? He sold all his real estate, all his jewelry, everything that he had, and he bought one big diamond. A few carats, ten carats. That's it. And he put it in the hat. Inside the hat, he, he sewed inside the pocket, put the diamond in. The hat is always on his head. So like this, everywhere I go, all my wealth goes with me. Remember, there was no banks, no safe. Even though people think that they put money in a safe in a bank here, they are safe. You are dreaming. Banks steal money from the safe. They steal jewelry from the safe. I have two brothers. One of them lives in Brooklyn, one in Yerushalayim. That their father was an antique collector of bills, stamps and coins. They had a treasure that worth hundreds of millions of dollars. The father bought things from the time of the Turkish Ottoman Empire. Things that he bought, let's say, at that time for five dollars became worth million dollars. He had rare, rare things that nobody in the world had. He had the best collection. It was all in a bank, in a safe. The bank robbed him. They said that there was drugs there, that they had to call the police. They came with dogs. They fake a case and wiped him out from everything he has. Now the FBI say, okay, you have to prove to us what you had. So how am I going to prove to you? This is things my father bought. It's, it's hundreds of years old. There's, there's no way to prove such things. It's all antique. They wipe them out from everything they had. They were very close to go to jail also. Not only did they rob them everything, they stole from them everything, they were trying to get them convicted like they did something wrong that they're going to the jail. So... You know, it is what it is. You put money in a, in a safe, there's no guarantee. One of the employees can steal it. There's nothing you can do about it. It's going to put the camera off, you're going to come, the safe is gone. You're going to say, hey, what's going on? Where is my thing? Can you prove what you had there? No, that's the whole point. I took a safe. I wanted to hide over their valuable things. They're going to drag you for years. There's nothing you can do about it. If corrupted cops would decide to rob you, there's nothing you can do about it. They'll clean your store out from all the jewelry. By the time you prove that there were corrupted robbers, it will cost you millions of dollars. And plus, you have to be in jail, lawyers, ah, it will be there. There's nothing you can do about it. I know one Persian man that it happens to him. Five corrupted cops robbed him in Manhattan. Steal all the diamonds, all the jewelry. They put him in jail for money laundering, for not paying taxes. Stop, they make up a case. Who was he in jail with? John Gotti. Six months with the head of the Italian mafia who tortured him, the worst tortures you can imagine. He told me, the person told me the story personally. He told me everything that I know, I lost my house, I lost my business, I lost millions of dollars in merchandise. My name is all over the newspapers and the TV in New York like I'm some kind of a criminal, on top of everything, they put me in a jail with the biggest monster in America, who will torture me, torturing me mentally, physically, threatening me that he's going to kill my family if I won't listen to what he does, I can't sleep before him, I have to clean his shoes. I... The, the biggest nightmare. And in the end, 
He came out of jail, innocent. They admitted that it was corrupted cop and they never paid him back all the diamonds and the thing. Too bad, you lost it. What can we do? We're going to send those cops to jail for two, three years. But you lost everything you had. You lost your home. You pay millions of dollars to lawyers. Your life became hell. There's nothing they can do about it. Why? Corrupted cops. I'm just giving you a few examples from that I know personally. You know how many other things can happen? Things that I heard over the years. I'm surprised I still have a hair on my head after hearing such stories. So anyway, Rabotai, this Yosef, the Gori, put the diamond inside his hat. One day, he walks over the bridge, a, w- a wind came, storm! The hat flew all the way to the water. What is he going to do? That's it. The diamond is gone. In the meantime, three goyim came, fishermen. They caught a big fish. Big! So wow, what are we going to do with this fish? Who's going to buy it? So only the Jews. It's Friday today. They buy things from Shabbat. Yeah, but it's almost the Sabbath. Run quickly to the market. When they arrived to the market, it was an hour or two before the end of the day. Yeah. They, they said, who's going to buy it now? So everybody already bought fish for Shabbat. So what should we do? They, they go him say, go knock on the door on the house of this Jew, Yosef. He always check if there is bigger fish than yesterday. Today he bought a fish, but your fish is double. For sure he'll buy it. He, he won't care about the smaller fish he bought. He always wants to respect Shabbat. Yosef, yes. It's Muhammad, Mustafa, and Ahmed. Open the door. What happened? You came to kill me? No, no, we have a fish to sell you. Big sell. You can get a good price for it. Wow, but I already bought fish. Wow, but a fish like this for Shabbat? You don't give me that much time to cook it. No problem. How much? Paid it. Open the fish. <laughs> What's inside? The hat <laughs> with the diamond. Why am I telling you this story? It's in the Gemara in Masechet Shabbat. The best part of the story, this is if you want to read the whole story in the Talmud, it's Masechet Shabbat, page 119. 119. Why am I telling you this story? The Gemara brings this story to prove that when you are trying to fight your enemy, you want to kill him, you want to do all kinds of things, Hashem will turn it around that not only you won't hurt him, you will be the one who make him famous. You will be the one who make him rich. You will be the one who make him successful, like Haman and Mordechai. Haman did everything he can to bury Mordechai. What happened in the end? The tree prepared for Mordechai was used for him. Yosef, the guy did everything he can that the wealth will not fall in the hand of Yosef. In the end, the only way Yosef could have gotten his money is when he was one diamond inside the hat. Because how is he going to get all his real estate? So the Goy was actually helping the plan of Hashem. Saying all of that, Paro found out from his Chosim uh, Bakochavim, the astrologers. They told Paro, the savior of the Jewish nation is about to be born. We have to make sure to prevent it. So Paro said, what should we do? Every baby who's born, we dump into the Nile. And every day we'll check. Once we see that Savior was born and we throw him to the water, you can cancel that decree. So what did they do? They tricked him. The family of Moshe put him in a little box, in a tevat gome. Yeah, and they put it in the water. Now they check in the sky. Oh. We see that the Savior is already in the water. They don't know he's in a special tiny ark. So what happened? Oh, so you can stop killing them. Who does Hashem send to save Moshe? His daughter, Batya. From all the people in the world, Batya found him. What a cute baby. What should I do? He needs to be nursed, breastfeeding. A Jewish woman. Ah, I can find you a Jewish woman to give him you know, food. Who? The mother. She has now milk. She just gave birth. 
So the mother of Moshe is now getting paid a very nice salary to feed her own child. And who raised him? In his own palace, the one who commanded his death. He prepared Moshe to be what he, was, what he became. Without that, Moshe would be able to kill the Egyptian. Moshe would be able to walk free. The only way he was, he, he was able to do what he, what he did is because they didn't know he's, an, he's a Jew, he's an Hebrew. They raised him. Meaning, when Hashem decrees something, there's nothing you can do about it.